into tea time. So you did it down there. Right. Okay, so maybe we're right. Got it. Okay, so which is very probable. I just made it. Oh, this is where I should have gone. Right, okay. Instead of getting the oatmeal. Got it, okay. That's, it was either eating that's the least of our worries. <laughs> right. That was not. <coughs> I wonder how I didn't catch that. Anyway. Or maybe I used I don't know. Let's pray. Oh God. We thank you for the gift that this day is. We thank you for the gift that we have And we thank you for the gift that we are able to be And with us this day as we go to work, may our efforts be well made in the name of Jesus. It's so nice to have a whole house, too. All right. <sighs> Okay. Make sure I can find my title. Okay. Knit ties. Yes. All right. Here we go. Then give me one second.
Good morning and happy Easter. A blessed Easter to all of you. Now, we will do the, the welcoming as printed there, but uh, here at Christ Church, we've added one little touch to that. Uh, after we say, Alleluia, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, Alleluia. Thanks to Jenny France, who was with us many, many years ago when she taught the kids in a children's sermon that at the end of that, after that last Alleluia, to, to really make the point, she had the kids go after Alleluia, yes! All right? It sort of makes the point in a very special way. You don't have to do it quite that dramatic, but how about do it along with me, please? Alleluia, Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia, Alleluia, yes. And I think that exclamation point is being heard in heaven today. Thank you for your help with that. Let us pray. O oh God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life that we share with Christ and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please stand as we sing the opening hymn. Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory, to, Glory you, to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, 
They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. And Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. We continue with the children's message. Good morning. I welcome our young people to come forward. Come on up. Come on up. Oh, join us. You can scooch up too. You can come closer. Come on in. So many, come on. Oh, this is so exciting. I'm so happy to see everybody here. Happy Easter. Hello. Okay, so anybody recognize the box? When did we last see this box? Well, you might have seen it just sitting right in front of our altar the last few weeks, right? And it had these signs on it. What does that mean? No, it means no, exactly, it means no. And so it means no alleluia. Do you remember that? Last few weeks in worship, that we haven't used the word alleluia, did you miss it? Maybe you didn't notice? Well, several weeks ago, at the beginning of Lent, we put all of our alleluias in the box, right? And we put them away with the sign that says no. And today, what, ha- what word are we using today? Alleluia. Alleluia, yes. And so, look, we have bright colored ones. Alleluia, yes. Okay. And does anybody know what the word alleluia means? Anybody? How about praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. And that is exactly what we're doing today because what is today? Easter, exactly, it's Easter. So we get to use our alleluias. We get to put the box back out right here at the altar and use our alleluias to say, what are we saying when we say alleluia? What's it mean? Praise the Lord, exactly. And today we have very special things, our alleluia wands, okay? I want everybody Take one, pass them around, make sure everybody gets one, grab a few and share. Okay, come on up, come on up. 
You can have two in each hand. I have plenty if that's what you want to do. I see some up here. Okay. Yep, you can, you can take two. I have plenty. Everybody get up here. Can you get one? Okay. Everybody who's joining us at home, you can wave your arms in the air. If you have some ribbon maybe from your Easter basket, you can do that too. Does everybody have one? Okay. So we are going to do our alleluia, and we're going to do it. First, we're going to wave and say, Alleluia, praise the Lord. And then we're going to do it the way we do it here at church with our Alleluia, yes. Okay? So you ready? You can stand up if you want. Okay? And we're going to count to three, and we're going to wave our Alleluia wands, and we're going to say, Alleluia, praise the Lord. Okay? One, two, three. Alleluia, praise the Lord. Okay, now you ready for the whole Christ is risen thing? Okay, so we are, I'm even going to look it just to make sure we have it right. Okay, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia, yes. Oh, wonderful. So we use our Alleluia's now for mo for a long time until we get to next Lent because we praise the Lord every time we join in worship and in prayer. So fold your hands and we'll say a prayer together. Dear God, hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise and thank you for being the good giver of new life. With you, the last word is always life, joy, and hope. We give you our hearts of praise, and we say we love you today. Amen. One more time. One, two, three. Alleluia. Alleluia. Okay, thank you. You get to take these with you. Take your alleluia wands with you. Somebody left one right up here on the floor. I gotta get me one of these. Oh, sorry, Jenny. They don't fly very well. Good morning. Happy Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Well, you guys are good. You're, you're a little bit more up than the 8 o'clock crew. Just a little bit more up than that. So here we are. April 9th, 2023. Let that sink in for a minute. April 9th, 2023. What do you think of Easter today? What do you really believe Easter is all about here on April 9, 2023? The third day of the great three days. By the way, by three days we mean Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and today, Easter Sunday. The great three days. Well, it certainly is a celebration, right? We've got lilies all over the place, and they smell great, as long as you're not allergic to them. If you're allergic to them, it's a problem, but that's okay. The smell is great. This morning at, at 8 o'clock and again at 11 o'clock, we had brass instruments up here, and they were, they were on point, and it sounded wonderful and festive. We had a procession at 8 o'clock. We'll have another procession here coming at 11 o'clock. That was great. Beautiful, joy-filled music, which we have every single week. And once again, as, an, as on every Easter, the choir this morning at 8 o'clock, they were dressed to the hilt in their robes and on their best behavior. The praise team is on their best behavior. Jeff wore a suit and a tie. <laughs> His other option was in a Hawaiian shirt, which I would have personally chose. But his wife, who sings in the choir, would not have been happy with him. So he's here with suit and tie on, beautiful tie. We would have been jealous, like I told you, Jeff, if you'd worn your Hawaiian shirt. More of us gathered in worship, dressed up, looking sharp, 
More of us gathered online. All around the world it's that way. Why? He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Yes. Yes. Easter is the exclamation point, isn't it? The exclamation point to God's redemptive work in and through Jesus. And frankly, we can't sing enough or loud enough. We can't pray enough or loud enough. We cannot scream and give thanks to God enough or loud enough. Because here is the truth, brothers and sisters. And I don't probably have to remind you of it, but here's the truth. We live in a Good Friday world, don't we? Here on April 9, 2023, Easter morning, we live in a Good Friday world. We live in a world that currently is in pain. Scripture uses the word travail. Travail. As a woman in childbirth, travail. Travail and, and pain. Whether it's the remnants of a pandemic, and I, I read an article the other day that we've got two more pandemics in line for us. Won't that be fun? Good Friday world. Violence and, and tragedy in schools. I remember I, when I was in seventh grade at Bexley, junior high, the good old days, right? And the big thing when I was in seventh grade was whether or not the Board of Education was going to vote to allow us to chew gum in school. That was it. I mean, that was the big deal. And the board voted, yes, kids can chew gum. And so up and down the hallway. And Mr. Bell, my science teacher, looked at us and he said, the world is coming to an end. And the custodians weren't particularly pleased either. Get your razor blades because there's going to be gum under the seats, right? But that was the big deal. Now, it seems like every day somebody's got a gun in school. It hasn't been that long ago that I was in seventh grade. Some of you might disagree, but it really hasn't been that long. We've got social upheaval. That continues. We've got, we're still threatened with World War III and all that. Israel, Syria, Iran, they're starting to bomb each other again. Economic turmoil, shortages, earthquakes, floods, fires, drought, hurricanes, tornadoes. The list is tiring, right? And that doesn't even include the distractions in life that try to pull us away from the Lord. Distractions in life that try to pull us away from the Lord. Pull us away from worship. Pull us away from prayer. Pull us away from scripture. Darkness. Darkness. Evil even seems to have the upper hand. Like it seemed on that first Good Friday. But it only seems that way. It only seems that way. To quote the title of a best-selling book by Tony Campolo, it may be Friday, but Sunday's a-coming. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Yes. In the midst of darkness. And I hope you caught that when we read the gospel a minute ago, that Jesus rose again when? when it was still dark. That's no small thing. That's not an, oh, by the way, while it was still dark. No, while it was still dark, Jesus rose again and comes as the Lord of life. By the way, the Easter phrase, it's Friday but Sunday's a coming, was originally penned by a pastor named S.M. Lockridge. Born in 1913, he died in the year 2000, but he was pastor of Calvary Baptist Church of San Diego, California from 1953 to 1993. Forty years in one place. And as Easter approached one year later in his tenure there, he was trying to figure out how in the world can I proclaim the Easter gospel in a unique way that people haven't heard from me before. A full generation of people. What can I say? How can I say it? And how can I express the great three days in that context, being Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter morning, all in one event with three chapters? Those of you who know me know that I like to use the term oom-pa-pa when it relates to Scripture. 
oom, pa, pa. Good Friday is oom, and Easter is pa, pa. So how do you describe that oom, pa, pa that goes on in scripture? This is what he preached on that Easter morning. It's Friday. Jesus is praying. Peter's a-sleeping. Judas is betraying. But Sunday's a-coming. It's Friday, Pilate's struggling, the council is conspiring, the crowd is vilifying, they don't even know that Sunday's a-coming. It's Friday, the disciples are running, like sheep without a shepherd, Mary's crying, Peter's denying, but they don't know that Sunday's a-coming. It's Friday, the Romans beat my Jesus. They robe him in scarlet, they crown him with thorns, but they don't know that Sunday's a-coming. It's Friday, see Jesus walking to Calvary, his blood dripping, his body stumbling, and his spirits burdened. But you see, it's only Friday because Sunday's a-coming. It's Friday, the world's winning, people are grinning, evil's grinning. It's Friday, the soldiers nail my Savior's hands to the cross. They nail my Savior's feet to the cross, and then they raise him up next to criminals. It's Friday, but let me tell you something. Sunday's a-coming. It's Friday, the disciples are questioning what has happened to their king. And the Pharisees are celebrating that their scheming has been achieved. But they don't know. It's only Friday and Sunday's a-coming. It's Friday. He's hanging on the cross, feeling forsaken by his father, left alone and dying. Can nobody save him? It's Friday, but Sunday's a-coming. It's Friday, the earth trembles, the sky grows dark, my king yields his spirit. It's Friday, hope is lost, death is won, sin has conquered, and Satan's just a laughing. It's Friday, Jesus is buried, a soldier stands guard, and a rock is rolled into place. But it's Friday, it is only Friday, and Sunday's a coming. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Yes. So, so, what does Easter mean to a Good Friday world? What does Easter mean to Good Friday hearts? It means simply, profoundly, and powerfully this. And if you don't hear anything else today, hear this. That no matter how dark it gets in this world and, or in our lives, in your life and mine, no matter how many evil things take place, no matter how tragic or horrific the circumstances surrounding us, Easter morning, while it was still dark, the risen, triumphant Jesus, God in flesh and blood, wins. He wins. It may be a Friday kind of world right now, but Sunday has come and Sunday will come again, finally and fully. In the meantime, you have a job to do, and I have a job to do. Your job and my job is to get our hearts ready for him, to invite him, to receive him, to welcome him, to follow him every single moment of every single day. So that catchy phrases like he is risen, he is risen indeed, alleluia, yes, and catchy phrases like it might be Friday but Sundays are coming. Don't just end there. Just don't become empty words that we sh cry out once a year. <clears throat> but that they would rule our hearts that would rule our hearts and not just be words. I'd like to share with you in closing a story that I shared with you last year at this time. It was a true story from a hundred or so years ago. It goes like this. 
a missionary and his wife had spent 40 years on the mission field. 40 years in mission work. When they retired, they sailed home. There was a general on the ship with them, and they had many conversations on the journey. The general just couldn't figure these two people out. How could they spend their entire lives virtually in Africa with tribes and all that kind of stuff and go through what they had gone through with very little reward, if any? When they reached the port, there was a great crowd there waving and cheering, and the army general was welcomed home as a hero. The missionaries were met by no one. No one. But as they wondered why, they seemed to hear a voice which said, you're not home yet. You're not home yet. They smiled, for they knew at their home train station all their friends would be there. They made the trip home, looking forward to seeing everyone. And when the train pulled into the station, they looked out the window. But there was no one there either. The old man, the old missionary, was overcome by disappointment. But his wife put her hand on his hand and smiled and said, Sweetheart, we're not home yet. We are not home yet. None of us are home yet. But the Lord has come to be the Lord of life in the midst of Good Friday. And that means, Easter means, that as we hold on to Christ in faith and trust and worship, everything will be all right. Everything. Everything will be all right. No matter how dark it seems, no matter how dark it gets, everything will be all right. Why? Because he is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Yes. Will you stand and join us as we sing Christ the Lord has risen today?
United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Almighty God, you call your church to witness to your salvation. We give thanks for all theologians, preachers, and teachers who proclaim your gospel. Equip us all to share the joy of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Risen Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, you bring abundant life throughout your creation. The green blade rises and all creation greets the resurrection dawn. Preserve vineyards, orchards, farm fields, and those who tend them. And we thank you that we feed on the fruits of your creation. Risen Lord, in your mercy. Powerful God, you show your steadfast love without regard to borders, barriers, or human-made divisions. Infuse your justice in every nation of the world that all experience the peace that only you can give. Risen Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, you anointed your Son with the Holy Spirit and with power. Encourage us by his example in our ministries of healing, caring, and outreach. We pray for all who are sick or hospitalized and for all health care workers who tend to them. Risen Lord, in your mercy. Joyful God, you have put gladness in our hearts. Inspire musicians to rejoice with songs of victory. Bless the music ministries of this congregation and all who foster our songs. Risen Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And life-giving God, as you have raised Jesus from the dead, you show us your resurrection promise. With all the holy ones who sing your praise, free us from fear and empower us to go and tell the good news. Risen Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Just a couple important announcements to share with you. Uh, next Sunday at 12.30, immediately following the 11 o'clock service, an important town meeting for the congregation to discuss the capital campaign. Next Sunday, 1230. And then a very important announcement just handed to me and I'm delighted to share. There will be an Easter egg hunt immediately following this service in the front yard. So young people get ready to gather Easter eggs and they've all got surprises in them. So again, following the service, uh, don't leave right now, not, not quite yet. Let's do communion first. <laughs> and one more time just to continue the joy. He is risen, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia, yes. And now we hear the offertory.
Please stand for confession and Holy Communion. As we come to the table, we come first to acknowledge our sins and our unworthiness for the great gift of Easter. Loving God, we confess that at times we do not share in the joy of the resurrection but are caught in the worries of the world. We confess that we do not always live in the spirit of new life, but remain discontent, grumbling, and anxious. Forgive us for not sharing in the good news. Forgive us when we find it more comfortable to worry and complain than to risk the joy and encouragement of new life in Christ. Call us back to your ways, O God, to seek hope and reconciliation, restoration and peace. In the name of the risen Christ, we pray. Amen. Christ is risen. The stone is rolled away. The tomb is found empty. Mary tells the disciples, I have seen the Lord. We have seen Christ too. In every helping hand, in every heartfelt gift, in every choice to restore life in this world. We are called to this new life, a life of forgiveness and reconciliation. You are forgiven. Accept your forgiveness and know that God loves you and desires great joy for your life. Walk forward on this journey of faith knowing that God is with you. Amen.
And we pray the prayer that our Lord taught to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. As we invite you to come forward for Holy Communion, just a reminder that once you have received the bread and wine from Pastor Tim and me, you are welcome to remain at the communion rail, either kneeling or standing, uh, as you share the, the bread and wine, or you may take it back to the pews with you and commune there. If you would rather have gluten-free wafers uh, and grape juice instead of wine and, and, the, and the bread, uh, just ask us. We've got little chalices here forward, uh, and we'll be happy to share those with you. But remember that no matter where you share in this Holy Communion, whether it's here or at home via online, you are receiving the body and blood of Jesus Christ broken and shed for you. The table is prepared.
Please rise for the blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And now, do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. As we prepare to sing our last hymn, we'd like to invite any of our children who want to come and grab an instrument up here at the kneeler to come play with us and to gather around Miss Lori up here up front. So if you want to come grab a shaker or a drum, come grab it and we're going to have some fun. So here we go. Alleluia, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, alleluia, yes, go in peace, share the good news, thanks be to God. Kids, Easter egg front, front lawn.